That's your major malfunction. Didn't mommy and daddy show you enough attention when you were a child? Let's play this backwards and see if it gets any better. Let's get down to business. What do you say? Show me the money! Always be closing. Always be closing. You're now listening to Boots to Business with Daniel Rabowski. Hey, welcome everybody to Boots to Business. My name is Daniel Rabowski. This is our first episode after the new year, so mm-hmm. that's exciting. Uh, you can listen to us every Sunday on WFLA Orlando at 93.1, 94.1, or 107.7. At, uh, that's HD3, by the way. Ooh, I don't even know what that means, but it sounds exciting. Um, <laughs> no additional information. Yes, thank, thanks for that. Um, anyway, that's on Sundays, 5 to 6. Uh, you can find us on all the socials, or you can go to wwwboots 2 the number 2, dash business.com. Um, in studio with me, as always, Melissa Jacob from Striking Brand. Hello, hello. And our guest in the studio is Brooke Boltz from Boltz Legal. Hi, Brooke. How are you? Hi. I'm doing well. Um, the first part of today's show is brought to you by uh, Insurance Claim HQ, powered by the Hare Shannara Trial Attorneys. Their commitment is to help make you whole again after a disaster. You can give them a call at 844-252-4684 or visit them at insuranceclaimhq.com. Um, so Brooke owns a law firm. And do you guys practice just, um, because I know you do first-party insurance claims. Yes. Do you practice other areas as well? I always love having lawyers on because you never really know what their, like... Scope is. Yeah, or, like, what their passion is, right? Mm -hmm. Because we, especially in our space, a lot of folks get into first-party claims because there's not, there's a, it's undersaturated, or they they have a home that got destroyed, or a family member's home, they have a reason Mm -hmm. um, that drives that want um how did you end up in the first party space and then what other areas do you practice so yes i do first party claims i my practice areas i also do personal injury okay and i also do pip suits however with the changes in the law they kind of killed our ability to earn attorney's fees on pip suits so that department is actually shutting down of mine probably sometime this year so, so the attorney fee conversation was not specific to first party insurance claims. There was an attorney fee cut conversation in a bunch of different areas. Other other types of insurance. So uh, if you have uh, a claim against a life insurance company, a car insurance company, any insurance company, now you can't collect your attorney's fees. So in first party homeowners cases, you we can take a percentage of the claim right. because there's enough Mm-hmm. value there to take a percentage but on a pip suit where you're fighting over a thousand dollar medical bill right you can't take a percentage of that so many law firms are shutting down their practices thankfully for me it was not my sole source of right. revenue so i'm able to shut down that practice and stay in business but um, it's certainly going to be a loss for me to lose that department now for those fees being cut obviously that's happening in florida a lot Currently, but I know in a lot of other states, like I, I came out of Texas when I first got into insurance claims, and in Texas, lawyers couldn't charge their fee above and beyond anyway. So, like, it seems like Florida was kind of catching up, for lack of a better term, there. In other states, for other types of insurance claims, is it the norm for lawyers to be able to charge their fees above and beyond? Or, like, since they're taking it away on PIP cases here, is it has it been that way in other states already? I don't know all the other states, but I do think that Florida is now doing what most other states have been doing all along. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what I think that's what I was getting at because we saw it with the first party claims. Um, a lot of lawyers in Texas could only get them if it was a bad faith claim, which right. I think is still the case here where you can your lawyer's fees aren't included until it becomes a bad faith thing, right? Um, that's an interesting thing. I, I'd never thought about the fact that it was not s- specific to property insurance claims, that it would just be any insurance-related claim. Right. That's uh, hmm. There are large PIP law firms that are shutting down mm-hmm. and that have been really profitable in the past because, as I said, you can't just pivot and keep moving in the same practice area yeah. when you're dealing with smaller losses like you do. In- yeah, I mean, because I know... My wife got in a car accident in Indiana, and there was a big law firm up there, and I 
for the life of me, I can't remember the name. It was kind of Morgan and Morgan esque, right? It was billboards everywhere, mm -hmm. all in. You know, we've had a billion dollars in this, that, mm -hmm. everything else, and they took a third of whatever her was. So, oh, wow. I just remember going, well, if the bill is five thousand dollars and the car was twenty thousand dollars, and this was this, and this was this, and you're getting a third of all that, then I can't actually pay mm -hmm. for all those things. And I always wondered how that worked, especially on the injury stuff, because they we had to provide all the receipts. Like you had to go in, and um, she had to go to like uh, rehab, pro rehab for. Um, physical therapy and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It was like a one. It's like doing contents on a on a property claim, right? Like that vase was ten dollars. You get ten dollars for the vase. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's the I just same in Florida though. A third. Uh, they it, turn the Florida bar lays out the the amounts that we are allowed to charge. So thirty three percent is what it is without a lawsuit. And if we file a lawsuit, it actually goes up to forty percent on then, personal injury. But then if it goes to a lawsuit, are your fees above that? Like they're it, no. in a, okay, so it is a part of the total settlement. Right. We've never had an entitlement to attorney's fees over and above the injury claim amount in, in personal injury. That's never in my career at least. Crazy. I and that's why I like having lawyers on here, because you never know again, you guys practice I very rarely run across a lawyer who's like, This is the one thing I do. I only mm -hmm. do this one thing and that's it. So mm -hmm. having to have such an in depth knowledge of all of these different things is is pretty crazy to me i mean we live in the public adjusting space but you're going to do you know build residential commercial you might mess with some contents you might mess with some additional living expenses but then it's like certain states will allow you to do cars but certain states won't certain states will allow you to do crops but certain states won't mm -hmm. everywhere you can do boats right but nobody unless you're like um michael gregora we had on the show that one day and that's his specialty is boats mm -hmm. you know and you just don't run across those people very often, but everything we do is very, very individualized. So then when you, when you end up talking to a law firm, they're like, oh, we do everything. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, individual lawyers don't usually do everything because with the law changes, I had looked at other potential practice areas mm -hmm. and came to realize that I'm too old for that. <laughs> I'm 43 and I've been doing no, what I've been doing. Not. You're not 43. I'm 43. And I've been doing what I've been doing for 15 years. So the thought of starting all over with something new I've never done before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was just like I, I couldn't I get in to. that headspace. Mm -hmm. I, I, my, my, I couldn't wrap my right mind around it. I bought a book and I read the same page over and over and over <laughs> because my mind just kept going to all these other things that I should be doing other than reading this book. Is that because that area wasn't – you weren't as passionate about that area or just – yeah, probably it just not, I don't, I didn't, I don't, yeah, I don't get excited about it, but mm -hmm. also too, I just think there's a time in your life when you're really, your, your brain is more open to mm -hmm. learning mm -hmm. as a like day to day. And, and at, at where I am right now, I am, I do learn every day with the cases that I'm doing, but I'm learning in smaller mm -hmm. amounts. I'm implementing more than learning right. sometimes. And so to, to start all over and learn something from the ground up was just, I just couldn't, mm -hmm. I couldn't do it. I could maybe hire someone to do mm -hmm. something different within my firm, but for me to actually learn it, I wasn't getting anywhere. Well, but in your, you know, obviously the, the firm is your namesake. So do you see yourself transitioning more into the running of the business side of it than actually doing cases? Or do you still kind of balance that really well? I have a pretty good balance, I think, right now. I mean, ideally, I think all business owners want to get to that place where the business isn't reliant on them mm -hmm. for the day to day. Uh, so that would be my goal to get to that place where I can, you know, the what's the cliche? Be on a beach somewhere and my business mm -hmm. is still making money. Right. Um, I don't know where that beach is, but I would like to find it as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's the goal at some point, but I'm not I'm not there yet, but I am at the place where I have really great staff who've been with me for a number of years. They know their job, so I don't have to be involved in every aspect of the day-to-day, -day, but I still have to be involved, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. No, it makes perfect sense, and I want to kind of dive a little bit further into the business side of things uh, when we come back from the break. Um, this is Boots to Business. I am Daniel Robowski. We will see you guys here in about 30 seconds.
We now return to Boots to Business with Daniel Rabowski. And welcome back, everybody. We're in the second part of today's show. Uh, this part of today's show is brought to you by Shield Tech Roofing Solutions, your premier destination for commercial roofing excellence when it comes to protecting your commercial property. You can trust in their top-tier roof coatings and expert repair services. You can explore their specialized solutions for commercial roofing today at shieldtechroofing.com. In studio with me is Melissa Jacob from Striking Brand. Hello, hello. And Brooke Bolts from Bolts Legal. Hello. And so there's also Bolts Media, right? Is that you, it's you and your sister solely? So Bolts Media is actually her business alone. My oh. sister-in-law's business is Bolts Media. I don't have any huh. association. So there, the segue there was when we were coming off the the last part of the show, we were talking about the business stuff. And I, I, I do catch a lot of the clips from your guys' show. And mm-hmm. there's... I don't know if you see a lot of this stuff, mm-hmm. and for anybody listening, go look at the Miss Biz podcast, and it's really cool because there's a lot of focus on, you talk about a lot of the stuff that people don't tell you when you start a business. Mm-hmm. You talk about a lot of the, you need a good person to do this. You need to be able to scale this. Don't get down on yourself. And, and what drove you to kind of go down that road? Because I, I assume just in the experiences that I've had with you that you started everything from the ground up yourself, mm-hmm. right? And so you had to learn a lot of these things along the way. And, and I think it's cool that you're now taking the time um, in the capacity that you can to put these teachable moments and these learning platforms out there for people. So how did, like, where did that flip, that switch get flipped? I don't know why I always, I always flip that. Mm-hmm. Um, for you, like, when when did you say, you know what, I'm gonna, I have a bunch of knowledge that I can start to put out to people. And I think, I should. Sure. So for me, as you said, I had no business experience when I started my firm. It wasn't something that I planned on. I didn't have a savings set aside. I didn't have any clients. It was very much, I'm going to do this and going to figure it out as I go. And so I, and I didn't have people in my family who had ever been business owners before. I didn't have, I had a friend who was kind of a mentor to me from a distance, but I really didn't have any source of that step-by-step. Here's what you do to be successful. And so a lot of it was trial and error on my own part. And looking, you know, after I got to kind of five years into my business where I had learned a lot and uh, I, I found that I really loved helping other businesses who were in that same position that I once was. And anytime I, Melissa probably knows because we're friends, Mm -hmm. whenever I would meet someone who was starting a business, I would just probably spend an hour with them right then and there, just telling them everything that I thought that they could use because it's just exciting to me to help other businesses uh, to grow. And so that was part of the motivation for starting Miss Biz was taking that passion for helping other business owners and my lessons that I've learned along the way and sharing it. But also as an attorney, I have my my legal knowledge I find is kind of boring to a lot of the public. Right. And so it was a way for me to also reach a broader audience with my business knowledge mm-hmm. than I could reach mm-hmm. with just my legal knowledge. Right. So I saw it as a twofold opportunity to reach a broader audience with uh with something I was also passionate about. And I think when you can find that, it's great, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it, I think in a, in a similar way, that's kind of how I've landed in some of the situations that I've been in where my skill set is boring. <laughs> yeah. I mean, nobody uh, being process-driven and an operations person, and I was a quartermaster in the Army, like, it's boring. Nobody, there's no flair to it. There's no pizzazz. And But what I found I was good at was helping develop people into leadership, Mm -hmm. helping develop people into some positive thing. And that's a lot more glamorous. And what it does is it ends up reciprocating back into your business because then they go, oh, yeah, no, I remember this person. Mm -hmm. He did this and so on and so forth. But there's so many people, especially now with social media, what it is, that are so full of crap. Uh, There's, if I can go the rest of my life and never hear the word guru, Again, mm-hmm. I'm good. Mm-hmm. And I think we all are. Like you, but you have to you have to trudge through that to actually put good content out. Right. And and do you guys do you guys see that where you being an attorney, that's people's first look at you, and then they go, oh, 
she also knows all of these other things, right? Because I think for attorneys, it's really easy because there's billboards and there's commercials and there's all this stuff that you always um, you always see them talking about. It's always dollar signs, right? It's always, we mm-hmm. got this person a million dollars. We got this person a half a million dollars. Like that's, that's always the promotion, right? Where you're out here yeah. putting out like, hey, we actually have business experience and business knowledge that we can convey to you. Do you see any negative repercussion from that? Like any negative pushback, like anybody going, well, you're an attorney. What do you know about whatever? Right. And to me, it seems, that seems somewhat counterintuitive. You're obviously in getting through law school, there's a level of intelligence that has to happen. And then running a business and mm-hmm. side note, it blows my mind that during law school, they don't teach you guys how to run, like open a business. It's the no. craziest thing to me. Every attorney I've ever talked to, they're like, well, no, they teach you lawyer stuff mm-hmm. and then push you out of the tree. Right. Um, yeah. But, because how many people start their own firm like right out? Wouldn't like right away? No, I don't think a lot. That's think that they mostly some serious guts to yeah, start right away because you don't know how to be a lawyer yet. Right. So be like ineffective. Almost. Yeah. The people who, who might start their own are going to be people who have some kind of prior experience like with, with family it. or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A family member who has their own practice or something mm-hmm. like that. Most of the time, people are getting a job working for someone else for a while. Right. So, but yeah, I took one course in law school that was called law firm management or something Mm. like that. And and, and we read this big book and it said in it that if you were ever going to start your own practice, you needed to have a six figure savings account. And so even though I had aspired to have my own firm someday, I never had any type of savings account anywhere remotely close to that. So I pretty much had given up on that dream. And then when I actually started my firm, I don't even know if I had a five figure face, five figure <laughs> savings account, yeah. but I definitely had the hustle and the the drive to get it done. And that's what uh, carried me through as well as the grace of God being in the right place at the right time mm-hmm. and meeting some right. really good connections. Well, I think that's, there's the cookie cutter boilerplate version of, Hey, if you want to start an underwater basket weaving company, you need to do X, right? Like there's that version, Mm -hmm. but they, they, you, and I think you have to build it that way because you can't really ever account for somebody's drive, right? You can't ever really account for whatever that person's motivation is. I mean, I know when I started our PA firm, we always tell people now, like, if you want to be a PA, you better have six months of whatever it takes you to live. You need six months of that. Mm-hmm. So if, for your, if you're a $5,000 a month person, you need six months of it. If you're a 20000 whatever it is, you need to be able to survive for six months because it's going to take you a good period of time before you get claim, file a claim, fight the claim, get paid. And six months nowadays is actually probably a bit aggressive. Mm-hmm. Um, we, didn't, we didn't do that. Mm-hmm. We did it with like less than 10 grand in the bank account. Mm-hmm. And I didn't make a dime from August to November. Jeez, and yeah. we're sitting here going max now credit cards mm-hmm. and doing all this other stuff to the point that my wife reminds me regularly that we did that mm-hmm. um, because she's so much of like a checkbook Nazi mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm a fly by the seat of my mm-hmm. pants type of person. So you guys are a good pair. Oh yeah. And <laughs> it made sense because mm-hmm. that we, I had the drive and the determination and mm-hmm. she just, she had to pull the reins. Um, but you can't account for that when you're, telling somebody how to start a business so when you have the ability and i think that goes back to what we were talking about with the the people being full of crap like while the book existed you were living a period of your life saying i need 100 grand in the bank to be able to do this thing that i dream of and then you did it with a lot less yeah it's good it's good advice there's wisdom in having a six-figure savings account um but it's it's not Absolute. It's not an absolute rule because I didn't have it and I did just fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, and obviously you are, right? I mean, and like you said, you're, you're able to remove something with new changes and statutes and laws from your practice area that didn't isn't going to make you close your doors. And there's probably a lot of law firms that that's the case. Um, I mean, hell, I know PA firms that are closing their doors because of just the way their their book of business came from law firms. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, a lot of eggs in the same basket. And so now all of a sudden when the person who's delivering the bread's not doing that anymore, it affects you as well. So um, I want to talk a little bit more about business when we get back. I want to talk more about the Miss Biz podcast. I want to talk a little bit more about you on the personal level. Uh, 43 is a crock. I don't believe you. <laughs> and uh, this is Boots to Business. I'm Daniel Robowski. will be with you guys back here in a few minutes. We now return to Boots to Business with Daniel Rabowski.
And welcome back, everybody. This is Boots to Business. My name is Daniel Rabowski. This is the third part of our show, uh, brought to you by Golden Temple Builders. They bring decades of expertise to commercial renovations and remodels. Their commitment to you is clear written pricing options tailored specifically to your project. You can visit them at goldentemplebuilders.com or call them at 321-508-0815 and let them help build your vision together. I did not mess it up that time. You got it. Killing it over here. <laughs> uh, in the studio with me is Melissa Jacob with Striking Brand as usual. Ooh, you jumped the gun. Again, you were going twice so well. They did it. So well. <laughs> uh, and Brooke Bolts with Bolts Legal. Yes. Thank How you. are you? Very well. It's been a whopping two segments, guy. Two mm-hmm. segments. We're on segment number three. Um, so during the break, I was giving Brooke crap because she says she's 43 and I don't believe her. There's this, the only reason that it's a thing is so over Christmas, I went out and had a drink with a buddy of mine that I haven't seen in a few years. Mm-hmm. And I love old fashions. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you drink at all? Are you like a bourbon? Oh, I'm not that kind of drinker. I'm <laughs> like a girly, sweet. Okay. Oh, sugary. Like- Okay. Mm-hmm. Cocktail. Well, that's what, an, that's what an old fashioned is for <laughs> bourbon drinkers, right? It's like, <laughs> let's take the bite of bourbon and add a bunch of sweet stuff to mm-hmm. it, and it's great. And they are phenomenal, but they are very easily messed up. Mm-hmm. And I went up to the bar, and I ordered an old fashioned, and th- I told Leia, I said, do not put any fruit in this old fashioned, because they will. They'll muddle the fruit in the mm-hmm. bottom, and I don't like pulp, and also, I don't like my old fashions with fruit in them. And this girl was sitting at the bar, and she said, you don't do fruit in your old fashioned? And I said, no, you shouldn't. Like, technically, you shouldn't. And she goes, how old are you? Rude. <laughs> said, how old do you think I am? She said, 48, which I feel like is an oddly <laughs> specific <laughs> number, right? Like, you could have just rounded up. You could have <laughs> hit me with 50, <laughs> and I'd have been like, you're wrong. <laughs> um, but 48 was just so specific. <laughs> you got five years on me. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I said, how old are you? And she said, how old do you think? I said, 21. She said, I know about old fashions. I was like, well, you're at least 21 then. She's Mm -hmm. like, I'm 23. I was like, you don't need to have a conversation with me Mm -hmm. anymore (laughs) about alcohol or anything else. Like, Mm -hmm. have a great night. But that girl hit me with 48 out of the blue. (laughs) I told my wife about it, and she said, well, you're old. I don't know what you want from me. Now, I'm 40, (laughs) four zero, just a single zero. And my wife's 35, but this girl hit me. Like, it just blew my mind that she just couldn't round up. Right, and I know took like, it if so personally. If I did. Just round <laughs> up, Still make it fifty. Wisdom. Make it fifty. Don't hit me with forty-eight. There's a reason that mm-hmm. you chose forty-eight. Somebody did you wrong. She that was confident. forty-eight. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so when you said forty-three, I was like, now nah, forty mm-hmm. tops. Like <laughs> I round to fives, right? So, mm-hmm. um, so oh, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Small victories, and um, I don't know why anybody wants to live in that those gaps, right? Like it's just. 40, 45, 50, whatever. I have, the, I have weird opinions about things. Don't it's get me started. Eliminating birthdays. <laughs> Listen, you want to, I have, I have these like weird rules that I live by. Everybody has quirks, right? Like mm-hmm. I have a thing where if you invite me over for a steak and you cook a sirloin, I'm never coming to your house again. Oh no. Like, good to know. I'm just, yeah. Why is it? Uh, because if you're going to invite me you're over just... for a steak, get a good steak. Okay. Like, that's like the <laughs> cheapest crappiest steak that you could ever find i don't if you put lemon pepper on anything we're no longer friends um if you i have a lot of minor food related i was about to say this seems like all kitchen related well so you have a lot of time when you're deployed like you have a lot of time to talk about really dumb things Mm -hmm. and so we get on these tangents when we're you know coming off missions or whatever and you just you find out a lot about people Mm -hmm. and like if i can hear my mom made the best chili Everybody's mom makes the best chili. Mm-hmm. Nobody's ever going to come to you and tell you that they make really crappy chili. Mm-hmm. Um, potlucks don't, buffalo chicken dip shouldn't ever exist. Um, and they, people treat <laughs> it like a culinary masterpiece. It's like you put cream <laughs> cheese, sour cream, hot sauce, and chicken together. That's all you Listen. Do. You're, <laughs> you're, you're a buffalo chicken dip person? Yes. The more <sighs> things you're rattling off, I'm like, Daniel just doesn't know, but we're actually not friends. <laughs> I have a lot of these food ones. Um, I have a thing with guys who wear swim trunks and then button up shirts. Okay. It's, a, it's a weird one yep. for me. Yeah. Because it and then, and then you're doubling down if there's a backwards ball cap oh, on. It gives like <laughs> such like frat boy. Yeah. And so like I just I have all these weird things. And when you verbalize them, the looks that you get, it makes for a really good conversation. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, I'm afraid I'm gonna do one. <laughs> you're gonna. Or two. Oh, you'll know. You'll know. Uh, do you have any weird quirks? Like people saying 43 instead of 40? Uh, 
I See, when, these are when the questions you, that make you think. Mm -hmm. As you were talking about that, I was thinking of my best friend in law school who probably had the most. She couldn't have the volume on the TV on an odd number. Mm -hmm. And I, I figured it out when I would like turn up the TV. Guys the same apparently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she would come pick up the remote mm -hmm. behind me and push and it like, one more time. Yeah. And I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And come to find out, I, 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 I paid attention long enough that it was it had to be an even number. Mm -hmm. um, Minor zeros and fives. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. No. The volume, it has to be a zero or a five. I say I don't have really? it with, I don't have it with volume. Oh. Mine, I have a number that I find and I'm like, that's the one. So like on our TV in our living room, the number's 12. Volume is at 12. If it's anywhere oh, other. Oh, for devices. You have specific no, no, numbers the, per device. Yeah. So like if you're in the mm -hmm. living room. And if the, the video games are on or if it's a movie or whatever it is, the sound bar is on 12. Mm -hmm. 13's too much. 11's not enough. <laughs> Cooper, will put, it at, Cooper will put it at 25. And I'm just yeah. sitting there and just, like my eyes start tweaking. Mm -hmm. and, um, oh, do I have I, any? I'm trying to you've got to have like something. The, you've got to have something. Really well, so I'm trying to do you make I'm buffalo chicken dip? <laughs> my husband loves buffalo chicken dip. so and, and that is within the range of very limited things I can make. <laughs> so she's like, don't so take that off my menu. I do make buffalo chicken dip because <laughs> I, you know, like you can't be uh, everything yeah, in this world. So that's Stewart. right. That, the that. <laughs> cooking is not my thing, but mm -hmm. buffalo chicken dip I can do, and he likes it. So what hot sauce do you use? Frank's. Just say Frank's. Just say you can't Franks. go wrong with Frank. Yeah. Franks. Um, I have no idea. Franks. It's red. <laughs> yeah. It's red, okay? Yeah. Um, it's, and it's funny because when you get into these more candid conversations with people, everybody gets all hoity-toity, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, you make chicken dip? And they're like, yeah. <laughs> I like, guess that's it, you know? Um, but, like, I've just – it's always been a thing for me. Like, if food is – I think I, I went so many times in my life without good food mm -hmm. that it's like – these are my sticking points, mm -hmm. right? And um, one of my buddies and I got into it just last weekend because he pulled out A1 and ordered a sirloin at a steak mm -hmm. place. And I said, oh, yeah, that's not we're at a place to... that makes great steaks. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you you're bastardizing this entire mm -hmm. process? Mm -hmm. And he goes, I just eat it for the sustenance. I don't really care. And I said, then we could have went somewhere else. Like, we eat didn't need to go to chicken a Chicken breast. <laughs> oh, I can't do chicken breast. After I had no, weight loss surgery, fine. I can't do it. Can't do it. Really? It's too dense. Mm. Can you eat chicken? Well, I can do chicken thighs, but the chicken breast is such a heavy, mm -hmm. dense meat. Um, so I had a gastric bypass surgery three years ago, and your entire diet changes a, at that point. And mm -hmm. any like heavy meats, like my wife can't do bacon. You just you can do steak. Huh? Steak. I can do steak. I know. Listen, lighter oh, than I chicken. I don't make the rules here. <laughs> um, <laughs> And it's funny because we have a bunch of friends that also had the bypass and everybody's got like one or two things that you go, that's what you can't eat. Like my wife mm -hmm. won't eat bacon. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why? She goes, it just doesn't digest well. Mm. Like, I'll eat a lot of bacon. Mm -hmm. um, but chicken breasts, I can't do. Chicken mm. thighs all day long. But Tricky. any chicken breast, it's too, it's too heavy for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's just steak is fine, which is weird because it's heavy. Um, and I eat a boatload of potatoes. In any capacity, them. I can get them. Baked potato, <laughs> However you make fried them. potato, mashed potatoes, it doesn't matter. Um, we just spent almost an entire segment talking about food. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Clint Army all over yes, again. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, do you know Clint Moore? He yes, is, I do. He works at Coastal Claims. Yep, he's a he's an attorney and he yes. does PA stuff. We had him, we had him on. We oh. spent two segments mm -hmm. at least. So. In my, I always try to do a little bit of research on people so at least we can have a conversation. And he was part of a Facebook group called the Clint Army. And you could only be named Clint to be part of this. <laughs> and it ended up taking over two for sure, mm -hmm. I think maybe three parts of the show to the point that when we got to the end of it, he said, so are we going to we gonna talk about claims at all? Or, <laughs> and I said, no, nah, man, we've passed all of that, um, which is what we just blasted through this last one. So, yeah, we've um, supported your army. You're there welcome. We go. <laughs> and um, so anyway, this is Boots to Business. I'm Daniel Robowski. We will see you guys here in a few minutes. We now return to Boots to Business with Daniel Robowski. And welcome back, everybody, to Boots to Business. My name is Daniel Robowski. This is the last part of our show. 
and is brought to you by Coastal Claim Services, your trusted partner in public insurance adjusting, headquartered here in Florida, serving clients nationwide. They specialize in first-party insurance claims, and when it comes to protecting your home or business and ensuring you receive a fair insurance compensation, count on their experienced team of public adjusters. You can explore their comprehensive list of services at coastalclaims.net and let them be your advocate for a hassle-free property insurance claim. In studio with me is Bliss Jacob with Striking Brand. Hello, hello. And Brooke Boltz with Boltz Legal. And we are going to talk about music parodies. (laughs) So my first interaction with you uh, was actually about a year and a half ago. I was on a podcast with this really great green screen behind me, and it was I remember going, man, I hope she edits this. And I was talking to my partner going, she edits everything. It's Mm going to be totally fine. And then I don't know that I ever saw it. And I was like, hopefully she just let it die. So if it ever aired anywhere. It's on YouTube. Oh, Lord, it exists. If anyone wants to look at it. Love that. You can tell them where to find it Mm -hmm. if you want. Look, I I do this. Nothing's off limit. It is called, now I have to remember because I changed the name since then. Um, The Story of You. Yes. Oh, yeah. The story of you, and so it tells your story, and it's on there. People can find it, it on YouTube. On there. Oh, not it's, much editing was done. I know it's gonna be me sitting in front of a green screen. I love it. Yes, one hundred percent. Um, so, but since then, I have been exposed to Brooks' TikToks, her Facebook. Um, are you on Instagram? I think you're on Instagram. I am on Instagram. And yes. Brooke apparently has an affinity for music parodies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> True. So anybody listening, if you get an opportunity um, on one of the socials somewhere, there is a parody of the All About That Base video, which Brooke has turned into All About That Case. And once you see it, it's stuck. It's <laughs> never leaving you. Yeah, it's, see been, it. <laughs> it's been months. It's been months and it's still in my head. Um, so what, first off, now I feel like I'm on the outside. How many music parodies have you done? So p- that are open to public <laughs> consumption. <laughs> one. Like, yeah, yeah. Just one. Got Just it. Just one that is publicly available. <laughs> I have now. done more than one in my past. Uh-huh. And where are those? Mm, only fans. <laughs> oh, whoa. <laughs> just, kidding. <laughs> just kidding. It's not just what you think it is, people. That's what I'm saying. There's, there I'm are trying fitness, to broaden there... people's horizons. So to give you an idea, it's, <laughs> it's much less nefarious than this is turning, so I feel like I need to explain. <laughs> I didn't say it. That's your friend. Uh, I know. That's your... Uh, my former law firm, we would have a competition between the different offices each year of a video. And so I volunteered myself to take the lead for the Orlando office and making our video each year to compete with the other offices. Mm -hmm. So we would do a music video parody each year for probably, I think, four years. And actually, All About That Case was the first one I ever did there. And it was everybody's favorite. And so when I decided to do it for my own law firm now. I had to change all the lyrics because mm. I'm on the other side of the case now. It's a remake. Uh, oh, remake. And, oh, and the it. original was filmed on an iPhone. So <laughs> so we had to upgrade a bit mm-hmm. to, to do the new one. Yeah, this is a whole like professional production. Just in case anybody listening, mm-hmm. again, go check this out. This was not like your buddy standing there with his phone recording. Mm-hmm. Like this was a full on production, mm-hmm. which is amazing. I love Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. So I have somewhere in, in somewhere are the, the other parodies that we did um, at the law firm, but I I would definitely be on people's hit list if I ever showed those publicly because mm-hmm. I'm not the only person mm-hmm. in the videos. <laughs> Can you at least tell us what songs they were? Yeah, um, we did Uptown Funk. Love that. And we did Shut Up and Dance With Me. Okay. Wait, is that how it goes? Shut Up and yeah, Dance I know the song. I don't know if that's the name of the song, but I know the, I know the song, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shut Up. Shut Up. And, that's the one. Cooper's got it on his phone. <laughs> and there might have been one other that I can't remember. It might have been just three. Now, did you guys make an effort to like remake the actual like video that those yes. had? So you'd like full parody, like Weird Al type. Love that. Yeah, well, we tried to mirror as much as many elements of the original mm. as we could 
um, especially this new one. This new one that's that, that you've seen was designed to mirror Megan Trainer's video mm -hmm. as closely as we could. Are you going to do more? Yes, I'm doing one this year, actually. You're fun. So, so we can expect one a year. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. It's holding you to a quota now. But you can expect one this year <laughs> because I already know which one I'm doing, but I haven't written the lyrics yet or really done much other than come up with the concept. I, I can't tell. Okay, so it's all hush hush for now. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you okay. know, no, that's I don't great. want someone to no, steal my idea it. before I can. I do don't it. know that there's a huge list of people. Um, <laughs> <We> <laughs> never know. Those lists. You never know. <laughs> you know, if I've learned anything in my forty years, not forty eight, um, <laughs> is that there is a niche for everything. Mm -hmm. There is a pocket of people who are into whatever it is that you want to put out there to the universe. Like, there's a whole. People, that's how all that kitten crap got stuck on the internet for years. It was just kittens everywhere. Do you remember this? Like okay, kit, yes. kitten calendars and kitten this. Mm -hmm. It was like there's a bunch of old ladies, I guarantee you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Driving up the algorithm yeah. for the kitties. <laughs> oh, so bad. Um, so now, because those those videos are part of the Bolts Legal, right? That's not part of the the podcast or anything like that. That's specific to your office. Yes, that video was all about that case from a law firm lawyer perspective so it's a bolts legal advertisement okay very cool and did you guys put it out anywhere like on, a, on an official platform or just on socials yeah it's just on all the socials it's it's a three minute video so it's really too long to put on say tv or anything like that yeah. um so the only reason just... i ask is because attorneys tend i I don't know. There's got to be somewhere down in the droves of what it takes to be an attorney of like spending money on advertising because attorneys spend the crap out of money mm -hmm. on advertising. So it's not surprising to ever see, um, you know, TV commercials, radio ads, giant billboards. I mean, they, we've, we've passed billboards for lawyers. And do you guys make your own nicknames? Do you ever see these? Do you have your own nickname? Mm -hmm. Like is somebody like um, there's a dude in Texas, his name's The Hammer. And then there's the mm. law tiger, and then there's the anvil. There's the like. Do you have a? Cool I, have one, I had one in our hometown that's like just mama bear, and I'm like. That's what I'm saying. Right. Like, so do you? Is that a thing when you when you're going through? They're like, you have to choose your own nickname and stick with it forever, and if not, you should. <laughs> so, I'm gonna say something embarrassing. Yes, I love this. <laughs> the so one of my friends has like all these brooks in her life, mm -hmm. and she was. It was getting very confusing who she was talking mm -hmm. about. So I had to come up with a nickname. So I can't even say, say it. it. Just, just, say just, it. Just don't make eye contact. It makes it okay, easier. I'm not going to look at you. <laughs> it was um, be money <laughs> She really had to force I that was, out. I, I was hoping it was about to be like Bee Rabbit or something, and we went right down the road. It was so good. Yeah. So, and it's really easy to write because I just do a B and then a dollar sign. Mm -hmm. oh. Be money. Mm -hmm. And people are always like, "Is this a BS?" <laughs> yeah, that right. does look no. Do you not see the lines <laughs> yeah, going through? Yeah. S? It's just a fancy S. <laughs> it's B money. Get it right. This couldn't be any better. Like this is because I can see it. Like I'm I'm seeing the signature and and everything. So, um, what about you? You got a cool ass nickname? No, I don't have a cool nickname. <clears throat> my brother is 13 years younger than me, and he could not say Melissa for the longest time. So he just came up with his own thing and called me Dotto. Doesn't rhyme. <laughs> doesn't have like any of the letters that are in my actual name. He just came up with his own thing. So huh. I like he's, that. he's a leader. My nickname's Robo because our last name's Robowski and nobody could pronounce our last name. Oh, see? But ah, that's a so cool is one. that the robot in your... Mm -hmm. I was wondering mm -hmm. that. People, and it's funny. People will be like, you're the guy with the robot. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, I am. Yeah. Um, well, Brooke, thank you for being here. It's been a, especially the last two segments. We lightened up a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's been great. Um, Melissa, as always. Of course. And so real quick on our way out the door here, I want to give a shout out to Rick Z with the Z Goalkeeper Academy. He is cancer free, um, nice. which is great. Congratulations. And um, we have Apex Performance Chiropractic, Claim Wizard, and then again, Z Goalkeeper Academy. Check us out on Sunday. We'll see you guys next week.